Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Ermenkov. I'm a ruling reality coach, and today we're continuing our, se our series, Ruling Reality as Alex. Today, I would like to work with you together and to speak more about the opium reality and everything that we as humans are understanding about the hope, why are we using hope and how to use it in a way that it becomes a tool for us and a utility for us and not just something which is far away or something that we are afraid of or something that we don't know how to use. When we were were little, all of us were dreaming, all of us were hoping, all of us were into imagination. But with passing of the time, we are more and more concerned about how we hope, what we hope for, and we are not even willing to reveal everything regarding hope. And the three most important things in reality, which are constantly Embedded into it are the hope, the faith, and the love principles. And these three principles are very important because they will be utilized in whatever environment there is out there. And it doesn't matter what will reality looks like in 2,000 and 5,000, in 1 million years from now, still these concepts are going and this um tools are going to be used by all the individualized consciousness and beings. And what is important to know that if hope is always going to exist, it is meaning that new things, that new worlds, new imaginations are always going to exist and to be into some type of a creational experience. The important thing in order to learn how to work with hope and to not go into opium, which I am willing also to explain, is to know how and when and for what purposes to use the hope principle. It is very hard and to some extent, it is impossible to work with hope connected to the construct of the reality. For example, I can be the only person in the human existence that can hope that tomorrow there is not going to be a sun and a moon and all the cycles that are ruling the earth. The problem with this is that the probability for this hope to become part of the reality experience and the objective reality, not only for me, but for all the beings that are, is very small, almost impossible, yet maybe in the future, and it's written even in some scripture texts, that there will be change in the construct of reality where there will be no sun and no moon. So, in a sense, we can hope also that there will be no sun and no moon one day. But anyhow, this type of hope is part of the constructural change in the reality. The second part of the hope, and this is where the hopium is more strongly present, is when we hope about the context. It is very easy to go into delusion when we start changing the concept and go into situation where our perception, the same feedback that all of us objectively receive, starts to perceive in a way that it is constantly trying to change the concept and to align it with some type of hope and what is a hope? A hope is a picture of the future that maybe will become part of the reality for all of us. The problem is that when we hope, we acknowledge that it is not in the moment. So in a sense, this tool is like an anchor 
that we place deep forward into the future, and then we have a problem. Because if we are trying to live only based on this hope and all our reality is going to pull us into this direction, we need to know how to use all the utilities of the hope and to use it for the right reasons and not for the wrong. Because if we stop existing in the now and only go into hopium and only imagine what if, all that we mentally picture is possible. And if we live for the day and we can mentally visualize it so vividly that this is our moment. When our hope becomes truth, only then we are going to be something. Only then we are going to be fully us. Only then we are going to express who we really are. And till then, we are not going to be who we really are. And this is where the boundary between hope and reality is coming into cessation and we can start working and living into dream worlds. And when we look into such type of people, we see that they're in some type of hope and their reality don't correspond with their hope. And this is where, in order to create the flow that is going from your reality, from my reality today, towards the anchor, a fixed mental picture we have put into the future, that's why we are to use the second utility of faith to create a flow that is moving towards this direction. So when I'm expressing my hopes for the future, I'm also expressing my flows that I'm creating right now and the reasonings why I'm doing what I'm doing into this very moment, into this very reality and why I'm seeing exactly these types of narrative, exactly this type of intent and this is when I'm expressing my agenda and what is the direction I'm going towards the future. And then a lot of us are going into different type of discussions and arguing which is the right hope. And the problem with hope is that hope is not a final destination, but the hope is a utility tool that we are to use in order to get focus and attention towards what we are willing to move forward. Is there a difference between the goal and the hope? In a sense, there is because hope is more like aesthetic extraction of the future into the now. And here, of course, there is another strong principle that we are to realize and for me, it was very hard to realize it, that basically we as human beings, we don't change. We only allow for ourselves to what extent we are expressing what is inside of us. And of course, then we say that this is the change because our external ecosystem of the now, in the reality is expressing in any moment who we have allowed ourselves to be in this very moment. And if we draw from the future expectation and hope and start expressing it into the now, we are actually seeding part of this future into the now. And I can give you a very vivid example of how this can be used and why we have been constantly taught to think linearly and then to never go backwards from the future towards the now and in this way to create our actions. If you open a book with a very strong and powerful story and if you start the book from the end, 
and go backwards towards the beginning, every previous chapter starts to make sense. And I did it on purpose with one economical book where one person was explaining his experiences in life and how he was dealing with business and how he bought companies and how he failed and so on and so on. But when I started the book, I started it once from the beginning to the end. I didn't understand a lot because I listened it, uh, several times. It's approximately four, five hours. Then I started it again because I saw that there was something interesting in the book and it is ba was based on the real story. So I wanted to explore how reality was working for this person since I'm willing to explore not only myself, but when I'm looking into the narratives, when I'm looking into the stories, how reality is revealed for other two people, I'm willing to really understand and to grasp the principles there. And when I started from the end of his life where his values were to be in a great state of well-being, to have time with his wife and family and so on, and moving backwards towards his overachieving years of successes and how he was strongly thinking that if and only when he is a strong billionaire, if and only when he is compared to all the big moguls in the business, only then he was going to be success. But in the end of his stories, when he was between 55 and 65, he had started to have issues with health and so on and so on. He moved away his life towards the center and towards well-being. And when I started the book from the end, it started to reveal to me from the end, from the most beautiful picture of harmonious life moving forward. And we see all the fluctuations of life and how little by little through the experiences that reality was giving to this person, he realized the most core purpose of the well-being where not the expressions are important, but the essence of who we really are. And you can see through this person's life that he was actually the same all the time, but he needed to review it for himself, who he actually was during all this period of his life experience. And this is how we are to use hope. If we hope and allow ourselves to imagine us into a different ecosystem of what we are expressing today, it only means that we are confident, not that we can be tomorrow this, but the potential of us expressing this type of ecosystem into the reality in the future is right now vivid and possible for us to start expressing. And of course, this is important because when we intentionally know that we like this type of mental, hopeful picture of the future for ourselves, we are not to start ignoring who we are in the moment, but we are to start working through ourselves, with ourselves, with everything that is part of who we are and to start moving to allowing for ourselves to express more of who we already have connected with from the future. And this is where faith is giving the substance of the whole hope of the future mental picture we are dreaming for. This is the right way to do it. But when we go into the hopium reality, we are do doing something totally different. We start ignoring what is in the moment. We don't give the right actions towards the future. And then we start engaging 
with impossible miracles that are to shift something for us and through us, but instead of us, we are trying to outsource the hard work of who we are willing to be to somebody else and it is not allowed normally through the power of freedom into the reality we to express something that we are not authentically willing and stateful to express. In a sense, this means that if I'm expressing in the moment, let's say in value and currency principle, something like five to 10 million euro in my own personal reality, it only means that if I start go into the hoping reality that one day when I be a billionaire or a multi-billionaire or whatever, I can imagine as pictures in my own personal reality, maybe then I'm going to have the perfect and wonderful life and so on and so on. But meanwhile, I'm just waiting for something to happen for me, something outside of me. And I'm just going into the waiting principle, into ignoring my reality, which is not corresponding with my hope and dreams. And I can go into my delusions and I can go into this association with what is in the moment in reality. And then I go into a childish state, but in the wrong way, because there is a reason why maturation is part of the reasoning power of the human being. So there is part of us, and there is a reason why we are to be childish, but towards specific things. And there is a reason why we are to be mature and reasonable towards what is in the moment because this is giving us a correct picture of what we are expressing in the right moment and what we are not willing to express, what we are not willing to sacrifice, what we are not willing to care for in this very moment. And then, of course, we are to open ourselves towards our dark side, which is holding us. There are so much works that we can do with our inner being in order to create and to work with our future imagination and our hope. So in a sense, our hope <laughs> is something like a strong act out of our inner being that is throwing something into the future through the hope and subconsciously allowing ourselves without the conscious being to understand it, to create this powerful flow through the faith and through the inspiration of giving the space, which is part of the love principle, to be willing as a being to express more of who we are. And expression is always connected with sacrifice. It's always connected with external care. And of course, this is a very wonderful part of reality. And this is why it's very easy for us to go into hopium. And I'm going to give you one more example in about hopium. Hopium is when we are dreaming for and hoping for world peace, which in this construct is impossible and will not be till there is a constructual change, which basically does not depend from the beings that are inserted into the construct. But in the constructual world we are in, if we only hope for world peace based on our human imagination, I have expressed it many times. For me personally, this is the worst thing that can happen to humanity because just imagine a world peace 
is possible in this construct if we allow to some type of superpower to control all of us, to not allow any of us any different expression that what is indoctrinated and put towards and in us. So when the human beings are imagining and imagining world peace, if we are imagining a world dictator that is going to manage everything in such a way that there is never a conflict that there is always happiness. And if we go into these directions of beautiful feelings and expressing and willing the outside reality to be changed because we want to experience just a different construct of reality where nothing is required of us anymore, where nobody is willing from us to sacrifice anymore, where nobody is willing from us to love our enemies, to give away when we don't want to give away, to commit when we want to be free, and so on and so on. And for me, this is also part of the hopium when the construct is clearly expressing to us that conflict is there for a purpose, that the balances of powers are going to be in collisions in order the next transformation to come. And long term, the pride is always fall, some other comes into the power, and then this empire falls, and another thing comes into a power. And meanwhile, we as human beings are constantly experiencing not constant peace, but we are always part of the cycles of this reality in the moment where death and life, war and peace and all the different cycles are always working. It doesn't matter if we are so strongly into loving only the light. And we can say to ourselves, Alex, I hope that one day there is no darkness anywhere, that it's only light. And when there is only light, everything is so wonderful. I can just imagine it right now, how the light is all around me. It's all around us. There is no darkness. There is nothing what we consider as evil. And it is wonderful. But there is a re reason why it is not like this. And there is a reason why we are to accept what is as a fundamental of working with hope and to know that hope is not what is in the moment. And anyhow, during this reality, we are just partially experiencing and we will always partially experiencing which is possible. Is it possible a world peace to exist into the cosmos of this reality long-term so that the forces that are balanced in such a way that they don't contradict each other because in the moment the construct is based in the building blocks of the construct balance is based on the contradictions. Without the building blocks of the paradoxes of light and darkness and everything else in reality that is in constantly forces balancing themselves in order we to experience the existence. And if we go into imaginations of different types of constructs where maybe it is going to be better for us, we don't know what we wish for. And that's why when I'm using the hope principle, I'm not in a situation where I'm working and being in the sense that I'm in a hopeless condition. I'm working with hope but I'm also working with judgmental considerations of when why hopes are becoming hopiums. And it is very easily done because we are afraid to work outside of mental perceptional constructs and frames we can call taboos. In our reality, we know that the light is good, 
and darkness is evil. Why? Nobody can explain it. In our reality, we can say, this is good and this is evil. Why? Where well, we think so, and so on and so on. So I'm strongly long-term as more as more as I'm working with the whole principle, I'm also discerning the whole opiums that a lot of people and the bubbles a lot of people are going into and how I understand that it is a bubble, how I understand that I have come into a opium because when I look into my present reality honestly and if I don't see that for me it is allowed a movement, a flow towards what I hope for, it means that I have come into some cycle of deception, of delusion, because I'm not bearing and not expressing truths that are leading towards what is possible according to my hope principle of my mental picture of the future I have seen. And the other very strong, powerful principle about the whole principle is that it is very easily able to attach us to reality and to stick us to reality in such a way that we are ignoring and sacrificing, and it's not even the word sacrificing, but we are ignoring and not considering anymore anything else, but we are just stuck into this mental picture of the future. And it is holding us and squeezing all our life force. This is why we have this type of scriptural pictures like Abraham's story where he was promised a son. And then there was a son from Sarah. And then out of nowhere, he was asked to sacrifice his son. His very hope for a future generation, he was asked to sacrifice his hope today, years after this narrative, thousands of years after this narrative, there are fights, we are killing each other because of this hope, of this story of some person that his story is telling that through this specific promise, there is going to be for you a future generation of people and so on and so on. And today we are interpreting this storytelling and we are trying to fight with each other about something that was ordered first to be sacrificed. Sacrificed in this scenario means that there is no hope. Doesn't matter what is, if we cannot reject it. And if we don't say, well, even if this future don't ever be, I'm still going to work with this tool of hope and move towards this future. So in the story of Isaac and uh, Abraham and the sacrifice, we hear in this story, it was also in other ancient religions, but here it's more important to find out the principle because we are to understand what is the difference in the narratives between Vogus, Mythos, and how the programming of the human perception and the human consciousness is happening through the centuries. But this is part of all other different topics. But the important thing here is that if Abraham was willing to reject this type of call and was not able to sacrifice his future, it was going to destroy him and he was never going to be allowed to have it. So when I was maybe 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 years ago, doing my mental work regarding this type of perceptions and I was imagining myself being rich in the future and I was saying to myself well what if one day my children are getting kidnapped what if they are going to be killed what if my wife is going to be killed and I'm 
okay with myself and I'm also willing to perceive the most dark future for myself and I'm willing to accept it as strongly as the most beautiful future for myself. So in my own personal reality, I have already relieved my children that my wife that I being dead, everything in destruction in my own personal reality and its future because it's also part of the possibilities. But when you look and when we look into our future and we see all the destruction, we see all the chaos and then we see what is possible on the other side of the building blocks of reality where it is also possible beautiful things to exist but we have sacrificed all the beautiful and we have seen all the darkness of the future. Only then, once we left and left and disconnected with the hope in the way that it doesn't matter if it appears or not, it doesn't matter, it's not part of what we are living for because there is no difference between our reality now and our reality then because there's no past, future and present into the reality existence. So the only thing we are able to do is today to allow ourselves to express a specific mental picture of the future that we are willing to see without holding to this future picture in such a way that it is controlling us. And this is where the Hopium principle is dragging us into this association with reality, into not accepting what is, into not giving us the ability to see our surreal situation. And we want to, in any any case, in any way, without any reasoning to just imagine that we are this future and not giving a clue of what is going and what is required for us in order this thing to be. And this important topic of sacrificing of our future and seeing how strongly potentially we are to express distraction as well as creation only then we are able to work with this whole tool. Because, for example, in my own personal reality as a Christian person that has been introduced to, to this faith based on my own personal experiences, not so much on the religion indoctrination. I've heard people saying that till the last day, we will never be sure if everything we are hoping for or believing for is actually true. And I was wondering when I was young that maybe this is not possible. How it's not? How should I one day come into the closing of my years here in this reality and will go into unsurety of everything that I'm building my life upon, if it's true or not true. And anyhow, now I'm more mature. I'm fifty plus years, and I know that nothing can be proved as true or wrong and only thing that is important to learn to use the principle of hope faith love in such a way that it is bringing us fruits that are good for us and others and that it is giving us the tools to be what we personally from the inside out would like to express into this reality and in this case, I'm using all my principles. I'm deconstructing a lot of things, but still it doesn't matter. I will never become an apologetic where I'm going to defend a specific truth and tell you, okay, everything that I believe, everything that I have connected towards my future and everything that I have betted upon to be my future existence, I'm going to defend with all my energy forces. No. I'm just saying that I'm using these tools as a utility to express today 
and to give me the ability to express more of who I am. And only then we understand the power of the internal against the external, which is the compound effect of everything that the human consciousness and nature and beings have been expressed to, to the centuries and as giving to us on a platter to start eating from what already is, but still we have the choice to look into the future and to see something different. And the beautiful thing is that all of us have a unique spark where only me, only you can see something specific and let us move towards this type of specific authentic hope and try to purposefully and meaningfully dedicate our life to these specific authentic expressions that we are to anyhow de archive through our conscious experience here in this reality day by day and to enjoy to be used as servants of part of the building blocks of what really is into this reality. And then it is more, much more easy, much more lightful to not take positions, to not fight for different narratives or to not argue. But what we are going to look into each other, aha, this is how are you using these tools? Okay, I understand now this way of using these tools of hope, faith and love are helping you to be more and more aligned with your authentic expressions and not to be afraid of anything that is part of the constructual taboos of what usually is the narrative. So we are considering what is, we are considering the different narratives, we are seeing what the construct is, but we are not forbidden to go into our authentic usage of the hope principle. And this is why I enjoy working with hope. I enjoy seeing other people, how they are dreaming, how they are going into imaginations. Also, I see a lot of attachments, a lot of hope going on around. And when people are going into the hope part of reality, they are becoming like in the bubble principle, defending, explaining why why there is different than ours and why they're more disconnected and why I cannot connect with them and so on and so on. And instead of going into an, an as me more uh, and into a more connection, they are becoming more and more disconnected with anyone who is not willing to agree with them or is not willing to support their hope. And I'm not part of any bubble and I enjoy just expressing what is in my own personal reality and whenever all of us are just working into this direction with other people hopings let us over focus on what is the utility for you right now how you use what you think is good and right and wonderful and beautiful how are you using it now in your daily reality what are the real actual steps small powerful meaningful actual steps that are creating the compound effect for you, for your future. What are the flows that I can see right now into your reality? What are the things you are caring for? Are you a careless person? It is another way of saying you are a hopeless person because you haven't just put from your inside out an anchor into some specific future. That's why the people of hope are people of purpose, people of goal, people that beautifully can just be a utilizing part of this reality. But people of hope you are going to disdain us. We are not going to like them because they become very dogmatic. They're willing to fight for what is their vision, so on and so on. We have seen a lot of different 
pictures and all of us can make a lot of examples about this but for me this is the important part about hope you and how and how to use this three principle of hope faith and love and just remember and for me this was one of the strongest part of a revelation is that love is to give space for otherness to exist. I know that we are all after oneness, but paradoxically, we all are confessing and saying how much we love the love principle, but the love principle is to allow otherness to be. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your reality. Always go deep into your mental thinking and use and I'm trying to use and I'm trying to always focus on the unseen, on the inner world and on everything that is not part of the surface because the surface is part of the expressions. It is anyhow already happening and there it's only something that we monitor as observation, but with no judgments, because it's already there. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your reality. And let's continue learning and training ourselves and yearn for maturation of becoming rulers of what is for any one of us. So. Enjoy your reality and bye-bye for now.